Hello YouTube viewers and fellow faceters. Today I'm thinking about cutting some of this Idaho garnet here in front of me. And I've got my eye on this piece here. I think this would make a nice trillion shape, triangle shaped stone. It's a really nice color. And it looks like it's very uh, clean, like there's no inclusions in it that I can see. Looks like a nice piece here. I've looked at some of the others and uh, they're all pretty good pieces. There's a very large one but I, I think it's got some fractures in it. It's not as clean. I'll, I'll work on it another day. So I decided this will be the one. And I'm going to weigh it. Six and a half carats. And I'm going to hot dop it with using wax. Okay, here we have the dop stone using hot wax. I've used silicone putty that's heat resistant on top of a targeting dop and I, I've also got a magnet so I can slide it around pretty easy. As soon as it cools off we can start to cut it. Here is our diagram I'm using for this piece of garnet. Triangle cushion brilliant for rhodolite garnet, angles for 1.76. My first group of facets will be 90 degrees. Okay, I'm working on the main facets. I've done the pavilion facet. The uh, girdle facets. I'm working with the 600 grit lap. Here I've finished polishing the stone. We're ready to do the transfer. I had a little bit of chipping with this garnet right on the edges of the facets.
This is a great color. I, I just hope it's not too dark when it's finished. Here I've done the transfer using epoxy glue. And we'll let it dry overnight and work on it tomorrow. Work on the crown. Here I'm cutting the six main crown facets. I want to show you something I put together for my faceting machine. And that's uh, what's called, what we call a Beal Woolly Meter which is named after Mr. Beale and Mr. Woolley who decided to put together a, a depth of cut meter for fasting machines. So what I have done is bought one of these 1970s or 80s vintage Simpson 260 multimeter which use, it'll uh, test voltage milliamps, uh, ohms, resistance, and uh, they're pr pretty bulletproof meters. I've used one, I used one back in the late 70s and I thought this was really a well-built unit and they're very heavy too, they're, they're made to last. So uh, I found this one on eBay and uh, I've hooked it up to my fasting machine. And you can see I've got the black lead going to the common, the positive lead going to the red, and I've set my resistance scale at 10,000. It wouldn't work right on the these two, the 100 or the one. So I had to go to 10,000 to get the meter to do a full deflection. So over here is where I made my connections to my Ultratech. This screw is a factory screw. I didn't have to do anything to it. That screw was there. I'm not sure why. So I just connected. Uh, a, I just connected that wire there. There, <clears throat> and I used the black one over here on the thumb screw that you uh, you find adjustment for your angle setting. It's loose, it doesn't really, it just kind of floats there. I may have to do something a little different with that, but I'm just trying it out right now. But let me show you what this, how it works. Okay, see my needle zero when I come down and I touch, I make my, and I touch the uh, setting for the angle. The needle goes up. This is going to help me make the same down pressure every time and make, cut this facet the same, I believe. Other people are using this method and making their own up. So it may take some fine tuning, but uh, we'll see what happens. But that's the way I've got it right now. And I don't know if I adjust this for a different angle, whether it will still work the same or not. But I may put a spring under this, and that may help me. But we will see. Okay, I've added a little spring underneath my fine adjustment knob. That puts pressure on my terminal, my ring terminal. That's working better. I was able to turn my resistance setting down to one. Resistance times one instead of the 10,000. And it's, it's not as it doesn't go all the way up and deflect, which is, this is what I'm looking for. 
Now I've started cutting this facet, the upper facet on this corner, one of the main facets, and I'll show you what it looks like. As I'm cutting, it's starting to, to go deflect to the right like it's supposed to. Now, if I take it off and go down, this is where the needle will stop. Well, it's according to how much pressure, but that's pretty much where it's going to stop. So it's working its way to that point. fine-tuning until I get this exactly the way I want it. Here all facets have been cut and pre-polished. I'm going to do the final polishing and I'm going to use aluminum oxide. That worked great on the pavilion so I'll use it on the crown here. All right, the stone is finished. We'll take a look at it.